Well, I see a lot of um, other veterans on here, so you all probably will have things to share as well. Um, I am going to share my screen. I am kind of a PowerPoint person to keep me on track of what we're talking about and doing, so um, want to do that. So we're going to talk a little bit about getting family buy-in, and I think this year is probably going to be harder than any of our years in terms of trying to do that with all of the extra worries and concerns parents um, have about it. Um, but it's important to get family buy-in. I know in my years of being popcorn chair and just being in our troop as well, if, stu if parents aren't bought into it, it's not going to happen no matter how much the scout wants to, it to happen. The parents really have to be on board or the sale doesn't happen um, for that family. Um, I wanted to share this video that Trails In has that I think um, kind of illustrates from a scout's perspective what it is they're really selling. Let's see if this works for me. Scout a scout promises to help other people at all times. Many of your customers are the same way. Customers want to help others and give back, but they may not know how. Through your sales speech, you can fulfill your customer's need to help others by demonstrating how the purchase will impact you, your unit, and your community. Most scouts simply ask customers if they want to buy popcorn or if they want to support scouting. However, when your speech explains the benefits their donation has on your life and how it will help others in their community, the amount of customers that want to make a supporting purchase increases dramatically. A great example of how their donation helps others is through program scholarships for low-income scouts and camp improvements for all scouts in your community. Also, mention any community services that your unit does, such as food drives, park cleanups, and service projects. Make sure they know that supporting these programs helps young men and women become future leaders in their community. This is something all customers can stand behind. So I hope that kind of, you know, because one of the things my question always is, is to parents, what are we selling? Are we selling popcorn or are we selling the scouting experience? And we're selling the scouting experience because anyone can go buy popcorn at a much lo lower price point than what we sell it at, but that's not what we're selling. It's kind of, in my mind, the thing they get for helping support. You know, a lot of times you get things in the mail from company or other nonprofits and they're trying to get you to support their cause and they give you something for making that donation. And that's really what, how I view how, why we're selling popcorn. We're not really selling the product as much as we're selling what the scouts are getting from that um, money that's coming in. And that's something that I think other people get behind. I know when my son has gone door to door, people are like, oh, it's scouts. I want to support scouts and they're buying it. It's not oh, I love that popcorn always. Um, sometimes it's that, but a lot of times it's, I really love scouting and I want to support it, or I want to support something that's helping the kids in our community. And so if you can do some of that while you're trying to sell, that helps. And I think getting parents bought into it, because I hear parents will say, oh, it's so expensive. I can't go door to door and sell that, or I can't ask my family to do that. Well, that's not what they're asking or should be asking what they should be asking is, will you support the scouting experience? And here's what it does for my scout um, in that process. So some of the things that, and I just listed a few things on here that it does for the community, you know, it supports the local scouting program. It upkeeps our scout camps. Um, it provides some of those after school programs in our lower income neighborhoods. You know, it's that camperships. Um, it's, it keeps scouting affordable for all of us. And I think that's one thing parents need to understand that it's not just directly what goes back to the unit, but it's what goes back to our community. And so even for my son, sometimes I have said, hey, let's go out and try to sell a couple more hundred dollars, not because it's going to help you or it's going to help your unit, but it's going to help the local scouting community and the things that we're doing. Um, and it's not necessarily just about what it does for that scout. And I think that's a good lesson for our scouts as well. If our scouts can learn that I'm not selling popcorn just for me, I'm selling popcorn for what it does for others. In a way, we're doing it as a service to others too. So um, talking about what it does in our community is important, I think, for our families to know um, more than what it just does for the unit itself. Um, but it also helps your scouts. And I think for parents, if they can understand how this is going to help their scout 
grow and learn. Um, it helps them make become decision makers. It helps them learn about money management, goal setting, you know, developing business ethics, you know, making choices between am I going to go sell scouting and do this fundraiser or am I going to watch TV or play this video game and how does that help me meet or not meet my goals helps build some of those life skills we want for our scouts um, as they move forward in life. You know, the business ethics, um, future entrepreneurs, you know, how can you do this better? What could we do differently? Those kind of things. It helps them learn people skills. I can remember <laughs> My son started as a tiger. They didn't have the line program when he first started. And I can remember the first time we went out to sell popcorn and like he was so nervous and stood behind me all the way, you know, and trying to get him to go up to the door and do the, what he would say. And every year I can see improvement in what it is that he's doing as he's selling. Um, and so I think for the tigers and the littler, the younger scouts, really trying to get them to understand they're not just selling popcorn will help them sell more um, and help them learn more. But as they grow, they should learn more and more about why it is that they're actually selling this and what they're doing it for. But it does those people skills. He's not afraid now to walk up to a door by himself. Um, he has grown in his ability to speak and speak up. Um, he has taken more ownership in that popcorn sale as he's gone through the years. And so I think all of that helps our scouts grow and that's what we want out of our program to begin with our you know our scouting is all about helping our scouts become better individuals and getting skills for life um, so they also learn how to be part of something bigger than they are you know especially if your unit um, does some kind of incentive for the entire group um, that the scouts learn I'm working not for just myself, but I'm working for the whole unit. So I'm gonna use the troop that we're a part of. Last year, our troop set a goal of um, $20,000 sales. Um, and that was just a little bit higher than we'd sold the previous year. But we wanted to give them a stretch goal. So we said, you know, if you sell 25,000 and every, every person who sells over $300 will then get to go on this special trip. We broke that 25,000 and we had scouts selling popcorn who have never sold popcorn before because they wanted to be part of the bigger, bigger piece of it and understand that it's not just about them. They could pay for their scouting experience, but it's more about how did it help the entire troop. And so I think getting people to see it's more than just for me, it's for the entire program is important. So, um, and I think it helps show them how to value hard work and how to help others through that process. And especially when they go selling together with another scout, and it's not about what it does for me, but together, this is what we've done. Um, that all is part of that as well. So I think if parents understand how it's helping the community and helping their individual scout, it helps them buy into it more um, because it's not just selling popcorn. I think a big part of it too is communication. I have seen where parents get very frustrated and don't participate in much in the sale or the fundraising process because there's not as much clear communication from the unit about um, the popcorn sale or the fundraiser in general. So I know when I was first popcorn chair, you know, like first year I was ever involved in scouting, my husband and I started a, a pack and we started the pack two days before the popcorn sale started. And so <laughs> um, we had to learn a lot of this really quickly. But one of the things I have found is being very transparent with your unit, with the parents and the scouts as they get older, what the plan is for the year. What is it that the unit is planning to do? Um, what are the events planned on there? And then you start talking about the annual budget. What is it gonna cost to do those programs and those activities for our scouts? and explain how this fundraiser helps pay for those experiences. Um, and if you can, like this last year, another group that I'm, one of the packs that I'm involved with, um, their fundraising didn't go well. They didn't sell as much, people didn't buy into it. And um, we've had to go through and cut experiences for those students, the scouts, because we can't afford to pay for them. And so I think if parents understand that, that this is what directly pays for the things that my scout gets to do in scouting, it helps with them um, 
understanding that need. And so being very transparent, what the unit plans are, very transparent on the budget and where all that money goes to, really I think helps people buy into it more than not understanding um, what the costs are for those kind of activities um, and how that goes. I think the other thing is being um, putting a scout goal out there per scout as well as a unit sales goal. Uh, it gives them something to work for and kind of gives shows them kind of the end of where they need to be um, at minimum with your group. One of the other things, um, and I've never done this part, but this was something that when I was trying to make sure I was covering all the points that other people had is commitment. I think parents, I know myself, I'm very, very busy with different things. So if parents know how much time is this going to take, you know, they look at it sometimes in the scouting, um, it's what, four or five weeks of popcorn season. This year it could be longer. Um, some of us started back in July already when we could start doing the online piece. And so part of it is how much commitment is this? I always figure my son and um, goes out to sell popcorn if he averages 80 to 100 dollars per hour that's been a pretty good day some areas you're gonna your average is gonna be way higher than that other areas it may be a little bit lower but figuring out what's your average that you do um, and then if your goal for your scout is 650 dollars how many hours is that going to take so if you can tell a parent hey your goal is 650 dollars sales it's going to take you about six to seven hours max to do this you know, over the course of how many weeks, and that makes them understand a little bit better how they can fit it into their life versus saying, I'm just way too busy to do this. Helping them see how they fit it into the time that they're doing um, and making that work helps them get bought into selling and doing the fundraiser for the organization. Um, the other thing is incentives. You know, how have you built in um, an incentive into your unit to help um, parents and scouts want to sell it as well? Um, you would hope by all the other things we've talked about, they're on board with selling, um, but a lot of times it's the incentive. So do you pay for the registration fee if they sell a certain amount? Um, are outings and camp fees covered or cheaper for them if they sell a certain amount? Um, you know, the money goes to the unit, but it doesn't mean that we can't provide incentives for the scouts to get portions of their adventures paid for. Um, scout prizes and recognition. And I put this together before I even knew what the prizes were. I just sat it through that session. So obviously the trails in prizes, um, if you can have unit goals, kind of like our unit did, you know, if we sell a certain dollar amount, we're going to have a special um, event as a unit. Um, we're going to do something unique as a unit. We're going to do something the scouts think is really, really fun, something that they really want. Um, so doing some of that recognition and also parent recognition, because we know that, especially for our Cub Scouts, the parents are a big part of making that scout, um, helping that scout do the popcorn sales. So celebrating or recognizing parents who've been instrumental either in helping the unit as a whole or really helping their scout um, make their sales goals um, because we know parents are a big part of it um, through this process. The other thing I would say is training. Um, I found this quote, I was looking for a quote that would really kind of sum up, but we don't rise to the level of our expectations, we fall to the level of our training. So we may have high expectations of what we wanna do, but if we don't know how to do them, we're not going to necessarily reach those expectations or those goals that we set. So helping parents, especially new parents to scouting and who've never helped, help them understand the difference between online sales versus wagon sales and wagon sales take order or storefronts. And everyone uses a different terminology. And I think that confuses our parents a lot. And I may not even have the terminology right on here because I didn't look back at the app. But now that we're all using this app, using the terminology that the app uses and how we train our parents of what sale is what kind of sale really helps them feel better. It makes it easier for them and not as frustrating. Because when if a parent gets frustrated with using the app, they're not gonna wanna continue to sell and no matter how much they believe in scouting. So understanding the different selling types, understanding how you do those, um, 
doing training for the app, how to download the app, how to sign up for an account, you know, demonstrate how to use the app and those instruction sheets. I'm thrilled that they've come up with some instruction sheets from Trails In and the council um, to provide to our parents. I created some last year for our unit. I did a special training session for them. I actually brought my laptop to all of our unit meetings several weeks prior to the sale starting to help parents get a Scout account signed up so that they all would have one in the app. Because even if we as popcorn kernels can put in the sales, they have to have that account. And so as much as we can do to make that easier, we have to realize that some of our parents don't have internet access at home, may not be able to sign up for Scout accounts. Um, so how can we make that easier? And so I just brought my laptop and I would grab a parent and say, hey, Johnny needs an account yet. Here, come over here. I'll show you how to do it. And we'll sit there and quickly say, sign them up so that Johnny had an account in there. Um, versus leaving that to them to do on their own. So the more that we can provide them in training, the more that we can help them make the process easier and smoother for them, the less frustrated they are, the more they're going to buy into helping do the sale. So training is an important part of that as well. The other thing I would talk about is responsibility. I think, again, this goes back to the communication. Um, being very clear with them about dates and when they're going to pick up product, where they're going to pick it up, how much they get to pick up, how often they can get new product, um, when they can return product, if they can return product, um, product delivery, you know, financial obligations, all of that. The more clear we are on our expectations, process, planning, the easier it is for parents and others to get bought in. If it's very confusing, if it's unclear, if they're not sure of the process, they're not going to get themselves into a financial situation um, that they're not wanting to be part of. So we just need to be very clear. Again, it's part of that communication, but covering all those responsibilities they have and what our expectations are. I think being very clear and giving handouts is great. I know when I was popcorn kernel, um, anytime they picked up product, they signed out with an agreement of what it was that our expectation was of them. Um, so that it was very clear and um, precise. So that's kind of my overview of what my thought is on how do we get scouts to buy into. I think it'd be great if we um, shared because I know there's a lot of people on here who have some experience of what have you done to help your parents get bought into um, selling popcorn for the scouting experience. And you can unmute yourself at this point to talk. <laughs> well, Carmen, since everybody's talking at once. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I thought, you know, because I'm going to be leading the marketing uh, session at 1.30 today, so I'm kind of finalizing all my thoughts around it. And I think we need to, instead of feeling entirely angsty about what's different this year, focus uh, and what, what could cause problems, we need to focus on some positives. And right now, I think people are craving a sense of normalcy, a, really wanting something positive, wanting to feel successful at something, because everything's just harder than normal right now. And so I think getting some buy-in from our scouts, families of, you know what, there's still a lot of things we can do because scouting is an outdoor program. So we're, you know, looking for the different ways to be creative about that. And then emphasizing, you know, we have, well, I don't want to speak for everybody, but many of us have more unscheduled time than normal. Even if we're still working full-time, our evenings and weekends aren't as full as they could be and have been in the past. And so filling our time with something productive that'll allow us to actually connect with other people and help our own units, it's just kind of a different angle to think about the normal. Rather than fitting in time to do sales, looking at sales as a way to connect with other people and have something to do. Right, right. Yeah, it will be different this year, but I think it's still, it will help scouts still develop some skills in how they're doing the things that they're doing. And eventually we will be able to go spend all this money. So. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You know, I was, um, our unit, our troop unit, it's been meeting in a park 
um, for the last couple of months for regular meetings. And um, I had someone that I work with saw us one night and she's like, oh, it's so good to see the scouts out and about again because I was really worried. And so I think there's people out there who are going to be very supportive of wanting that normalcy to come back for our scouts and are going to be supportive of, you know, a popcorn sale to show their support, you know, and show their support to the community. It's something that feels a little bit normal and people feel like they can do something to help with that normal. Yep. What do you guys um, think about how to handle the parents who are worried about storefront sewing? How are you guys handling that? Well, I know in our unit we've been talking about whether we're going to do storefronts or not and kind of how I handle my staff at work in terms of I have some staff who are very concerned about the COVID, others who are concerned but not letting it bother them. You know, we work through our protocols to make sure we're safe, but we're not worrying about it. And so, you know, my thought is it's going to be up to the parent and the scout who feels comfortable. You know, we don't make them do storefront. So it's if you feel comfortable doing this, here's the precautions you need to take to make sure it's safe. And we welcome you to be a part of that. But if you don't feel comfortable, I don't think in a pandemic we should force people to be part of those experiences. So um, I think in those ways then, because of the online sale options that we really help them understand how they can do it differently in a different way than having to work a storefront. Um, and I think that's part of why storefronts aren't gonna be as popular if the stores allow us there is because we're gonna have parents and students who aren't gonna wanna be at storefronts. But I think with, I've had to deal with a lot of safety protocols of where I work. Um, we're invited, Monday, we have students starting to move back on university campus and I have events and activities for them and how do we keep them all safe when they're back? And so a lot of the protocols that we've used there, I'm gonna be using if we get to do storefronts. Um, you know, everyone wears a mask, you know, we can either put gloves on or there's sanitizing material there and you sanitize your hands after every transaction. You limit the amount of cash you take. You try to use credit cards. You don't have um, people picking up products. You have one item on display and you hand a product to the person once they've purchased it. Um, you set up your table so that there's a six foot distance between you and the person who may be purchasing from you. You know, there's safety protocols that you can put in place to make that a safer transaction for our scouts. Um, and we just need to work on doing that and then allow scouts who feel comfortable to do that. Other scouts may be at more high risk because they have high risk families that they live with that aren't going to want to come out and do that. Just like with the schools, you know, there are some students who, parents who've chosen to keep their students home and do online versus putting them in the school because of health issues around their family. And so I think we just need to be very supportive of what it is that that scout family can do during this time. But others may have other thoughts. Carmen, you hit every point we have talked about on the council level. So if you are thinking about doing storefronts, uh, we welcome you to do that, but your scout needs to be wearing a mask and they should be wearing it properly. Um, they need to have hand sanitizer with them. If they decide to wear gloves, they need to do that procedure properly and not touch cash and then touch this product and that product. You have to change your gloves properly. Um, and we also suggest that, yes, you have one person put the product on the table and then it doesn't get touched again until it's leaving with the customer. Yeah. Yeah. We've got safety protocols like that because we have information fairs at the university all the time. And so we've put in place, how do we do that? We're actually contact tracing also at those tables. Um, that would be a little more difficult at a scout table selling product to do a contact tracing with who you all interacted with that day. But, um, you know, if you're interacting with someone, if you have a mask on and they have a mask on, hopefully they do, um, and you're less than 15 minutes with them, your chance of catching COVID is very, very slim. And so 
It's just a matter of making quick transactions. Most of the time at those storefronts, you are not talking to that person more than one or two minutes um, and making that transaction and they're moving on. And so it should be a pretty low risk if we have proper sanitization there. You know, our unit sets up one site and then different scouts come every hour or hour and a half to work that site. Well, that site needs to be then sanitized every shift. You know, the table needs to be cleaned off, the money box needs to be cleaned off, whatever it is we're using needs to be cleaned before that next person comes um, and starts selling, just to make sure that it's safe for the next person that's there. Um, and our scouts aren't gonna think about that as much. So unit leaders are gonna have to put together some protocols for storefronts, but then also um, make sure parents are there to help um, the scouts do that. I would also say with the safe distancing, you're going to need to limit it to one scout per shift, um, not doing two because they would need to stay six feet apart the entire time. And how do you do that with especially younger scouts, but even older scouts? My college students, I had four in my office the other day working and I said, you all have to stay six feet apart. And I had to keep reminding them because they migrate towards each other. <laughs> All the time so you don't want two scouts selling for an hour together even if they are masked um, there's too much risk at that so they need to be you know distanced so, sorry that's totally kind of on the sideline but yeah it's important to but that will help I think if you should put in and be very clear about the safety precautions you're going to have for storefronts that should help some parents feel more at ease at doing them So does anyone have, um, one of the things I know we've cha been challenged with is the scout whose family says, oh, we'll just pay cash for everything. We don't wanna worry about trying to sell anything. How do you get them interested in selling? I mean, that was our case with our unit. We had a couple of parents who were that way. And when we gave the unit goal of, okay, we're gonna do this trip, and it was a trip that boys, all the boy scout oh, group um a trip that they all wanted to take those scouts that have never sold before because they would just pay for everything they were like oh i want to go to that and i can't go unless i sell and so they got more into um doing that so every one of our scouts then who sold chose to sold, sell met that goal now unfortunately we've not been able to do the trip yet because of covid That's got to be disappointing for your kids. Yeah, it is. We rescheduled it three times. <laughs> and every time, we just don't have the clearance, you know, to get them there. Every parent, it was a trip to St. Louis, and not all the parents want to drive to St. Louis. So until we can all transport together, we're not going to be able to do that trip. So it is disappointing, but hopefully one day we will be able to do it. Very good. Um, Val has posted in there, if you're um, not watching the chat, would it be helpful to have a sign at the booths with expectations for customers as when we expect from, as in we expect example of no touching unless buying products, use credit, use card when you can, et cetera. Yes. I think, you know, like all the businesses and stuff have those, um, you know, here's our expectations of interacting with us. Um, and credit cards would be preferred. I mean, I'm thinking of investing for my unit in even those the ones that they can just touch and you don't have to put into a, a machine or swipe on your phone because then you're touching their card. If it's a, one of those Bluetooth ones that they can just touch their card to and you don't even have to interact, it's even less um, touching experience there. But yes, very good idea. Carmen, I was just researching those to suggest them and the touchless ones for a square reader, at least on Amazon, is $35. Yeah. And so it works with the chips, it works with Apple Pay and other things. And so that, that has its appeal. Yeah. Anyway, 35 bucks was what I saw on a quick search. Yeah. I mean, I would pay $35 and donate it to our unit to just yeah. have in the box that goes to the storefronts to use every time. Yeah. You know, $35 is worth having everyone get... Say, be safe. 
if you are going to have customer expectations at your table, I would make it as positive as possible um, and make sure that the scouts are following all of those protocols too. When you put on that uniform, the community immediately sees us, even the younger kids as people who should do better and know better. So it's important for us to be those role models. Um, so just make sure it's something like a scout is helps others at all times. Let's help each other stay safe and enlist the protocols that you would like them to follow. Does council have something like that or is that something council can can make and put on their popcorn sheet or resource area for people for colonels? I will bring that up um, to the others on staff because that was a lot cuter than I was going to post so yeah. <laughs> mine was more like like keep each transaction under 15 minutes and <laughs> a lot more straightforward and to the point instead of cute <laughs> I was debating on because see our area we don't we have individual like the parents have to take their own kids out we don't have stations so like some packs and trips do so i was even debating on creating a kit with like a um plexiglass topper that goes on the table you know just to kind of for the extra precaution but yeah yeah if you can find plexiglass um <laughs> and can do that um, I just know how expensive that is. Um, we have plexiglass everywhere on where I work at USI. I work out at USI and we have plexiglass everywhere to provide some of that extra protection. Um, so, other thoughts? I went through my slides really quick, but hopefully they gave you some ideas of, you know, how important it is to sell. We're selling scouting. We're not selling the popcorn as much as we are selling scouting um, because I'm on a lot of those Facebook groups too and people complain about the prices of it and all of that and it's not you know you can buy a similar bag of popcorn in the store for probably three or four bucks but it's the donation to the organization that you're doing um, and we're just not asking for straight out donations we are selling something to give you something and so um, that gets a little bit harder and there will be times, I think, in this era of COVID, we have families who have not been able to work, um, who don't have the income that they've had in the past, and it may be harder for them to support scouting even though they want to support it. Um, the uncertainty of the future, um, those kind of things all make it harder for nonprofits to continue to bring in the funds that they need to to operate their organizations. And so as much as we can, you know, assist with all of that um, is helpful. So. Any other thoughts? Uh, we have been asked for your slides. So if you want to share your slideshow with me, I'll put it on the website. Yep. Yep. Not a problem. Not a problem at all. Be happy to do that. Uh, we are technically on for a few more minutes. If you guys have questions, feel free to stick around and talk to us some more. If you didn't sit in on the first one, at 12.30, we have the popcorn app training. Um, if you have already taken that today, then you can take a lunch break. And our, after that is marketing your sale and or basics for new popcorn chairs, both starting at 1.30.